Hello friends, welcome back to the Pathology Insights. Today we will be discussing about the pathophysiology of the nephritic syndrome. In this video, we have already finished about the nephrotic syndrome, the pathophysiology of the nephrotic syndrome. And today we will be discussing about the pathophysiology of the nephritic syndrome. Now, what exactly is the nephritic syndrome? Nephritic syndrome, it comprises of group of glomerular diseases which are characterized by the inflammation in the glomeruli. So, whatever the manifestations we see in the nephritic syndrome, that is mainly because of the inflammatory damage to the glomeruli. And the clinical features we see typically hematuria, proteinuria. Proteinuria we even see in the nephrotic syndrome, but the difference is here we don't see that much of heavy proteinuria. We have a proteinuria, but it is not as much as we see in the nephrotic syndrome. Then the patient will have the hypertension, edema, oliguria and azotemia. So these are the clinical manifestations. Just to remember, if you remember A2 HOPE, A stands for azotemia and 2H is for hematuria and hypertension, O is for oliguria, P is for proteinuria and E is for the edema. So these are the clinical manifestations. Now we will see why these manifestations occur. So, if you remember the normal uh, filtration barrier in the glomeruli, in the capillaries, this filtration barrier, it is formed by endothelial cells, the basement membrane and the podocytes. So, these three components, they form the filtration barrier. So, in the nephritic syndrome, we have damage to the endothelial cells by the inflammatory cells and the mediators. Now, these inflammatory cells, they come here because of the immune complex deposition. This is important. The inflammatory cells come into the glomerular capillaries because of the immune complex deposition. They get activated and uh, they cause damage to the endothelial cells. In a similar way, we have a damage to the basement membrane also, which can be because of the primary renal or secondary systemic diseases and there will be damage to the podocytes. So all the three components of the filtration barrier are damaged because of the inflammatory cells coming there and the mediators they are releasing. So when we see exact pathogenesis, how it happens is, uh, as I told you, it's mainly because of the immune complex deposition. Now we have two types of the immune complex formation. The immune complexes are formed somewhere else in the body and they are circulating in the blood. So antigen antibody complexes are already present in the blood. They are circulating in the blood. They reach the glomerular capillaries and during the filtration process, they get deposited on the endothelial cells. This is one mechanism. Another one is we have the antigen which is present in the glomerular capillary wall itself. Now here, these antigens, we call it as an uh, nephritogenic antigens. So antibodies are formed to these antigens and they directly come and attack the uh, nephritogenic antigens which are present in the glomerular capillaries. So here also we have a formation of the antigen antibody complexes. So whether they are formed somewhere else and they are deposited or they are formed within the capillary walls, whatever may be the mechanism, we have the deposition of antigen antibody complexes. So once these complexes are formed, they activate the complement system. So this complement, uh, during the complement activation, if you remember, we have a C5 convertase and C3 convertase, which will be breaking down the C5 into C5A and B and 3A and 3B. So in that C5A and C3A, they act as a chemotactic factors and they attract the inflammatory cells. So we have lots of inflammatory cells coming there and these inflammatory cells, when they also come in contact with the immune complexes, they get activated and they release the hydrolytic enzymes and the inflammatory mediators. Now here the immune complexes which are present, they can be present either the subendothelial or in the basement membrane or even they can be present subepithelial and in the mesentium. But wherever we have a complex immune complex formation, we have activation of the complement and release of the complement factors which will attract the leukocytes. So obviously the next step is when the leukocytes come there, they get activated and they release their own uh, mediators. They release hydrolytic enzymes and they release the cytokines which will cause damage to the endothelial cells and the basement membrane and even the podocytes. This is the main mechanism in the nephritic syndrome. Now, depending upon that, we the 
just the causes we have classified them as the immune complex deposition under that we have the uh, certain conditions where immune complexes are formed somewhere else and they are deposited in the glomerular capillary wall. So we have post-infectious glomerulonephritis, lupus nephritis, rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis, hinox shonlin purpura, membranoproliferative glomerulonephritis. In all these conditions, we have immune complex deposition. And uh, uh, as I told you, the conditions where we have antigens which are present within the glomerular capillary wall itself. So anti-glomerular basement membrane mediated diseases we see in the good pasture syndrome and even in the rapidly progressive glomerular nephritis. Sometimes we have in this nephritogenic antigen itself. This is the another cause. And another condition is the posi-immune glomerular nephritis. Here the immune complexes which are formed are less. But here mainly we have small vessel vasculitis. So, uh, and all the small vessels are affected. They have a vasculitis. Vasculitis means we have inflammation of the vessels where we have inflammatory cells infiltrating the vessel wall and causing damage. So, in the small vessel vasculitis also we have nephritic syndrome. And there is an another condition called IgA nephropathy. So, exactly the cause is not known. But in these conditions we have aggregates of uh, IgA antibodies which are deposited in the mesangium. So they will cause the process of, of complement activation and the damage. So these are the causes of the nephritic syndrome. Why the manifestations? We have seen the manifestations as hematuria. First we will see why the hematuria and albuminuria occurs. So as I told you, we have a glomerular uh, filtration barrier which is formed by endothelial cells which rests on basement membrane and we have a podocytes. These podocytes they have a negative charge. So food processes of the podocytes they have the negative charge. So whatever has to filter from the blood vessel it has to pass through this filtration barrier. What happens in the nephritic syndrome is there is a damage to the endothelial cells. So these endothelial cells, they contract and they swell up. So we have a gap between them and even the hydrolytic enzymes, they cause damage to the basement membrane. Then we have a podocytic damage also so that we have a widening of the food processes along with we have a charge disruption. The negative charge which is present, there will be some disturbance, charge disruption also will be there. Now, because of all these conditions, increased gaps and charge disruptions, we have a leakage of the material which is present in the vessels outside into the, into the glomerular filtration. So, RBCs, few leukocytes and albumin will leak out as into the glomerular filtration. So, that causes hematuria. Now, as I told you, we have a leakage of the RBCs. Now, so when we see a urine of this patient, we see dysmorphic RBCs and acanthocytes. Dysmorphic RBCs means we have some abnormality in the shape of the RBCs. So we see dysmorphic RBCs and acanthocytes. And the RBCs which are filtered off, they get enmeshed in the tam horsewall protein. Now, this tam horsewall protein is produced by the renal tubular cells. So they get enmeshed in the tam horsefall protein along with a few leukocytes and they form the RBC cas. So we have hematuria which contains RBCs, dysmorphic RBCs. We have RBC cas and even the albumin also leaks out. So we have a proteinuria also in these patients. So that is a cause for the hematuria and the proteinuria in the nephritic syndrome. Now why these patients should have the oliguria? Now, this is a normal glomerulus where we have capillaries and we have a mesangium which consists of the few mesangial cells. What happens in the nephritic syndrome, as I told you, when there is a damage to the endothelial cells, they swell up. So, when they swell up, the lumen is reduced. Along with that, we have proliferation of the mesangial cells because of the growth factors and the cytokines which are released by these inflammatory cells. These mesangial cells, they get stimulated and they proliferate. So we have proliferation of the mesangial cells, we have infiltration of the leukocytes. So as the mesangial matrix is increased, the vessels which are present gets compressed. So these vessels get compressed and the lumen decreases because of swelling of the endothelial cells. So all this, it causes decreased blood flow into the capillaries. So that causes the oliguria. 
is for the oligoja. You have a reduced blood flow into the glomerulus because of the decrease in the capillary lumen that causes reduced glomerular filtration rate. And when there is a reduced glomerular filtration rate, there is a compensatory reaction in the body. So we have compensatory secretion of aldosterone, enhanced drainage secretion and stimulation of the sympathetic system so that there is a contraction of the blood vessels in the body and the body will uh, force the blood to flow into the kidney. But here what happens, though the blood flows into the kidney, it cannot flow through the kidney because the lumens are very less. So more pooling up of the blood occurs in the blood vessels that causes hypertension. And along with this, we have increased secretion of the antidiuretic hormone. So this causes retention of the sodium and the water. So along with the hypertension, when there is more retention of sodium and the water, the fluid will enter into the interstitial tissue causing the edema. So this is a cause for the hypertension and edema. And uh, because of reduced GFR, obviously the amount of the urine formed is reduced. So patient will have the oliguria. When the patient is having the oligodia, that is the amount of the blood which is filtered is reduced. So there is a reduced filtration of even the urea, nitrogen and the creatinine. So amount of the blood filtered is reduced. So we have uh, more retention of the urea, nitrogen and the creatinine in the blood that causes the azotemia. So this is the cause for the oliguria and azotemia. So these are the clinical manifestations of the nephritis. So in summary, when we see the cause of the nephritic syndrome, mainly is because of the immune complex deposition in the glomerular capillaries, which activate the complements. And we have a release of the complement factors, which acts as a chemotactic factor for leukocytes. So these leukocytes, when they enter, they release the hydrolytic enzymes, causing damage to the endothelial cells, basement membrane and the podocytes. And these damaged endothelial cells, basement membrane and the podocytes, they lead to the uh, hematuria. And also there is leakage of the proteins causing albuminuria. And when there is hematuria, RBC CAS, we can see the RBC CAS in dysmorphic RBCs. Along with uh, the leukocyte infiltration into the glomeruli, we have proliferation of the mesangial cells and swelling up of the endothelial cells. So these three uh, conditions, they decrease the capillary lumen causing decrease in the GFR. So when there is a decreased GFR because of the reflex mechanism, there is a contraction of the uh, systemic blood vessels, all the blood vessels in the body that causes increased pressure in them along with increased secretion of the ADH. ADH causes sodium in the water retention. So all these mechanisms, they cause hypertension. And because of the increased water and the sodium retention, the fluid leaks out in, into the body causing the edema. Then because of the reduced GFR, the patient will have the oliguria. And because of oliguria, the amount of the blood which is filtered is reduced. So the patient will have accumulation of the uh, nitrogen, urea and the creatinine causing the azotemia. So this entire thing is uh, the summary of the pathophysiology of the nephritic syndrome. Thank you friends for listening patiently.